Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about music and movement with your preschooler. Music and movement is so important in a child's development for so many different reasons. There have been several studies done and I'm going to share some of that information with you today about what's been found. I'm also going to share some homemade instruments that I just threw together that you, I'm sure, have many of these items around your house. So they're cheap, they're easy and enjoyable for the kids. And then finally at the end, I'm going to give you some information about a Spotify playlist that I've created with a lot of my favorite preschool songs. So before we begin, just a little disclaimer. If you have watched any of the videos with your kids where I'm singing, you've already figured out that I can't sing. I can't. I own it. It's, it's just not my gift. That's okay. I can't sing, can't carry a tune. What I hear in my head is correct, but I'm told it's not, you know, it doesn't come out properly. That's fine. However, I do it because it's so engaging for kids. Kids benefit from it in a great way. So I'm going to continue doing it and hope that they'll join me because it's good for them to join in as well. Some of the studies that have been done have shown that listening to music, interacting with music is like a workout for your brain. And when you're working your brain out in that way, you're making new neural connections, which is so important. It's how we grow and how we learn and how we develop. Some of the things that are happening inside of a child's brain when they're listening to music and participating in music is they are developing speech patterns. They're hearing new sounds. They're hearing new words. They're learning to say them. They're learning things like rhyming words. This helps with reading later on. This helps with their speech development. Some of the other things that are going on when a child is listening to music is that they're learning about the music itself. They're learning about tempo. They're learning about rhythm, rhyme, patterns. It opens up the spatial reasoning portion of their brain, which helps them with math and many, many other things later on. It also helps them to develop coordination. We all know that gross motor skills are obviously involved when you're playing an instrument, when you're dancing and moving to music. But with a child, if you've ever watched a one-year-old, a two-year-old trying to clap along to something, they maybe stomp their feet at the same time, they are working so hard. The concentration of trying to do these two movements at one time. But every single time they do it, they're getting better. They're getting stronger and more connections are being made and they're becoming more coordinated. As I said, obviously it's a gross motor activity when they dance and move and clap along. But also when you do a finger play with a child and you sing the finger play and they get their hands involved, they're strengthening these fingers and their fine motor, which is of course so important. There are social emotional benefits to this. Children don't, are, they're not self-conscious. They can sing and they don't know if they're good. They don't know if they're bad. They don't care. They'll just walk around the house singing all day and that's fine. That's awesome for them. It just builds a little confidence. They don't care how they're dancing. They don't know. They don't know if they're good, they're bad, whatever. They don't care. It doesn't matter. They're moving and that makes them happy. When we get to be with people again, it's also good for groups of children to interact. It makes shy your children a little bit more comfortable when they have this instrument that they're working with and then they don't have to necessarily speak to the other child. They could just join in some fun. One of my favorite times at preschool is when say two or three kids get over there and they find the music tub and they find the instruments. Next thing you know, two or three more kids and then two or three more kids and you've got a preschool band on the carpet. And they may not sound like a high school marching band, but they sound perfect just the way they are. And they're socially interacting, they're getting confidence, they're making connections, they're getting tempo, they're getting rhythm and all of those things. Music is a great attention grabber. If you are talking to your child and they're not listening, they're not paying any attention, if you just changed the way you're talking and you started singing to them, the next thing you know, they may be paying attention to you. You have just kind of changed it, made a connection in their brain and you're pulling them in a little bit. Sometimes it works, can't say it does every time, but sometimes it does, it's helpful when it does. Finally, music brings people joy. I think we've all felt that. You've been in your car, good song comes on, you turn down the, the window, you turn your music up, put the windows down, and you just love the music. You're at home, making dinner, you're um, out somewhere and you hear a song that brings back a happy memory. Music does bring us joy and it fills us up. And that's always a wonderful thing, especially right now. We could all use a little joy and all use a little filling up. So those are some of the benefits to music. Now, when you are at home with your child, you can grab some things around the house to make some instruments and let them just kind of have their own little band, let them have a good time and make their own music. Let me show you some of the things that I've brought today that you probably have around or have something similar that you could use. 
there is the old standby. I have an oatmeal container. Mine's full, so that shaker right there, if it were empty, I could turn it into a drum, either with my hands or I could use a spoon or something as a stick. Some of us, all of us probably have disinfectant wipes around the house, right? You can use a container like that. Um, anything you have like that, that could be hollow on the inside. It's kind of fun too. I started with the oatmeal container full. I can make a sound. Then when it's empty, the child can try a new sound. They could see, is it different? Is it the same? Why do you think that is? Also around my house, I just grabbed a meat rack. Just happened to have this in the cabinet. And then I grabbed a spoon, a wooden spoon, and I could take it and I could try it in different places. I could try this. And then there's the vibration that I'm feeling as well. Different things you can have the child play with and you can also talk to them about. I had another wooden spoon, so a couple spoons and can play sticks, those musical sticks. And then if you have something maybe with some texture to it, you can also do a little bit of this and then they can hear the sound as it goes along the texture. Uh, a few weeks back on our rainy day video, we made a rain stick. It's a great way to talk about tempo. You can go nice and slow, really fast. You can try different things with it and see what different sounds you can get. You can put different things inside of it and see what different sounds you can get. So those are a few things right there. This one, I enjoy this one, simple thing. I had some hot glue, some buttons, and a paper plate, and I made a castanet. And then when you're doing something like this, you can even talk to the kids about culture if you wanted to. Where does this come from? What kind of instrument is it? Who plays this? And you can look videos up of watching them play. It's, it's beautiful when you watch. Uh, paper plate again. Paper plate for the win again. Made a homemade banjo. This one I just put one rubber band on, but you could put as many as will fit. And you have a homemade banjo. I stuck a ruler on the end so I could hold it. And then too, if you had different thickness of rubber bands, you can hear the different sounds and the child can explore that. I did not have a long tissue box, but if you have a long tissue box, same concept. You can put it on a stick, put rubber bands over the opening when it's empty, and turn it into a guitar. Banjo, guitar, you've got two right there. This one is one of my favorites. If you have any of these little plastic eggs left from last spring, take it, open it up. I've got some dried beans here. I'm gonna put some inside, close it back up, and I have an instant shaker. Now, I would recommend taping it closed. I just have some packing tape here. I'm gonna go around that way, you know, a little less mess. Eventually it might open, so you wanna make sure that what's ever inside is gonna be safe for your children. If you have a young one around that you know will put this right into their mouth, another option is, again, a container like this, maybe a wipes container, and some of those bigger wooden blocks. Put it in, seal it closed, and they have something that they can hold in their hands and that they can shake and make music. This I thought was really cool. I came across this idea. Okay, I'm gonna take the same egg with the beans inside, a couple of plastic spoons, and tape these on there. And I'm gonna have a maraca. Mm, my tape got kind of jumbled up here. But if I were to tape this around and tape this, I have a maraca. So they can decorate the egg, they can decorate the spoons, you can get cool tape, all of these things. These are all easy ways to do music at home with your child. Now, I talked about a Spotify playlist. I have created one with some of my favorite preschool songs. The link will be following on Facebook. And you can go out there and enjoy the music. Maybe it will introduce you to some new artists that you haven't heard before. Maybe it will bring back some memories from your childhood. The songs on there are great. They're engaging. They get the child learning positional words like right, left, up, down, over, under. While they're moving, they are learning and they have no idea. I can't help but think that back in college, if my calculus professor had put derivatives to music, I may have learned it a little bit easier. I mean, why do we stop doing that? It's a great way to learn. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have some fun making instruments and listening to the music. I'll see you next time.